This is one of the most highly requested videos I've had in the past two weeks. In this video, I'll give you 10 tips to optimize your job search, especially if you're looking for a skilled workers visa. If you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Cynthia. I share information that will help your transition into the UK to be as smooth as possible. There are some tips I have here that would help you increase your chances of getting that job you desire. Let's get into this video. The number one tip I'll give you is to check whether your role is on the shortage occupations list. The shortage occupations list is a list of jobs that are on high demand in the UK. It means that there is a higher chance of you getting a job if your occupation or your area of specialization falls under that list. I always advise people to do this before they choose a master's course to study in the UK. But if you're already in the UK and you want to know whether there are higher chances of you being employed or whether your occupation or area of specialization is on high demand in the UK job market, it's pretty easy to just use this tool. Google shortage of patients list UK to open the page skilled worker visa shortage occupations. On this page, it says, check which jobs are on the shortage occupations list in each area of the UK. Then you click on the ONS occupation coding tool. ONS stands for Office for National Statistics. When this page opens, the next thing you have to do is just to key in your role or the job you're searching for. And then you would know whether your job is on high demand in the UK. The reason why I like this tool is because it gives you the job code, job description, entry requirements of the job, task required by the job, and jobs related to the code. Go through the job description to find out whether you have the skills to execute this job. This leads me to the second tip when job hunting. The second tip is that you should find out other names that your role occupy in industry or academia. What does this mean? For example, I'm a microbiologist. There are other names that microbiologists answer when you are searching for a job online. It's very important that you gather those names so that it will help you optimize your job search. It can help you determine other job opportunities that you are qualified for so you can increase your chances of getting a job. Without this, you might limit yourself by looking for roles which have microbiology written in them. And this might be limiting to your job search. This same advice goes to people working in engineering, finance, any other field or area of specialization. The third thing you need to do on my list is to get the list of companies that have the sponsorship license to recruit internationals or foreigners and sponsor them on a skilled workers visa. When you know the sector you can work in, you can recognize these companies that have the sponsorship license to recruit you based on the skills you have. It's very easy to assess this list of companies. What you can do is you Google Register of Licensed Sponsors UK. You click on the government website there. It gives you the list of organizations licensed to sponsor workers in the worker and temporary worker immigration routes. When you click on this, you can see it gives you the organization name, town and city, county, types and rating, and the route, which is skilled workers visa. If I were you, I'll select 50 companies from this list because it helps me narrow my job search so I don't keep sending applications to companies that cannot sponsor me. The fourth thing on my list is for you to start an internship or volunteer in your area of specialization. This is how you can land your dream job. I was on the train a few months ago and I met a master's student and I asked her, have you started working? She said she hasn't started working, that is too early. And she has been in the UK for four months. Please, once you step into the UK, you should start your job search. In fact, your job search starts before you come into the UK. Then you know that you want to settle in a particular country. Therefore, you tailor your skills to suit the needs and the demands of that particular country. So once you come into the UK, you should have an internship that you've started and then you pick up some valuable skills, work experience that are from the UK. And also you have the opportunity to have references from that particular job that certifies your performance professionally and character-wise. It increases your chances of being recruited in the UK. However, if your visa is about to expire, you can't have that opportunity to volunteer or 
pursue an internship that would convert to a permanent job what you have to do now is that you have to move to the next point i'm about to give which is subscribing to job sites there are many job sites but i would say you should subscribe to the big ones especially indeed cv library azuna linkedin read monster jobs.ac.uk which you can get academic jobs for example research fellow research associates phd job opportunities are found there too these job sites give you an opportunity to upload your cv and perhaps might notify you whenever a new job opportunity pops up in your area so it's always good for you to check your email from time to time but before you apply the next point i'm going to talk about is about tailoring your cv or cover letter to suit that job i know you've heard of this a couple of times before and you'll be wondering what do you mean by tailoring your cv or cover letter to suit the job opportunity you have to understand that there's what they call ats compliance it's very important that you know that if your area of specialization is highly competitive it means these employers might be getting a thousand applications in a day so the way they can screen through these applications without even reading them is that they use an ats compliance system to check your applications to know whether they suit a particular criteria they have put on board so in such a way it, some of your applications might not get to the employer when you see a job advertisement what you have to do is you go through it and see the responsibilities the duties and what they expect for you to have and make sure that those keywords appear on your cover letter or your cv so that you increase your chances of being selected to the next stage sometimes those people who have not been selected in that initial stage of screening get automatic rejection letters that says that sorry we could not uh, take your application further to the next stage and they wish you luck in your job search so you don't want to fall under that category that's why they say you should tailor your cv and your cover letter to suit the demands of the organization when writing your cover letter please use the proper address please look at the job advertisement to find out who the employer or recruiter is and address your cover letter properly another way you can do this is to optimize your resume or your cv or cover letter try professional services they are paid professional services on fiverr and i think upwork has some paid professional services you, they could guide you on how to write a proper cv or covered letter another thing you can do is please put whatever you've written on grammarly it could help you correct some spelling mistakes or inappropriate grammar used in your cover letter or cv Grammarly could also help you improve on the communication of words you have on your cover letter and your cv Grammarly could also help you communicate effectively what you desire on your CV or cover letter. If you cannot afford professional services, I would advise you to meet some of your friends who are maybe British and have good command of English to go through your CV and give you feedback on how you can improve upon it. Especially your cover letter too. It's very important that you have someone that is a native English speaker to go through your CV so that it communicates what you really desire. The next thing I'll tell you to do is to clean up your social media. I'm talking about your TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Make sure whatever you have there is made private or is properly written so that you're not being judged. The first thing some employers do when they get an application that they're interested in is that they might investigate you and investigating you by going through your social media and seeing some things that might not align with their company standards or policy. It's just a way of rejecting you. And I would say you should keep your personal things private. I'm sure you don't want to be judged based on some remark you made 10 years ago. We, sometimes there are some cultural differences in the way you express yourself and it might be misunderstood when somebody reads it on text. Since you want to avoid some complications like this, it might be best to keep your social media private until maybe when you've gotten your job. Another thing I will tell you to do is to optimize your LinkedIn profile. If you know that role that you want, go and search for at least five people that are currently occupying that role and mimic their LinkedIn profile. Find a way to 
best express yourself, the skills that you've acquired, what you can do. Also, if you need some top-up trainings on LinkedIn or Udemy or Coursera, you can go ahead and do that and put them on your profile. Please find a way to present yourself professionally because this is the first impression that an employer might have. LinkedIn is a good place to advertise yourself. If you upload the right CV and you get notable people that you've worked with to endorse you. Recruiters can approach you instead of you approaching them. Another thing I would advise you to explore is to use career services provided by your university. You've paid for these services already. It's part of your tuition. Why not make use of it? It's been stated that only 2% of international students use these career services. And these services have a good way of helping you prepare for a job search helping you with your CV, your cover letter, as well as preparing you for interviews. Interview skills are very, very important aspects of landing a job. Also try to attend recruitment seminars and headhunting events. It's a great opportunity to network with recruiters. Please don't be shy when you attend these events. They are there for you. Be shocked the number of people that are willing to help you progress to the next level. And this leads me to the last tip, which is to apply to as many job opportunities as possible. I'm not saying you should apply in a diluted way, but as much as possible, try to optimize your CV to each search. I know it can be very exhausting. Apply to as many jobs as you would do with the highest quality of CV or cover letter that you can provide. You don't want to be so diluted that you don't get any but you want to be able to give a personal touch to your CV, your cover letter, as much as possible. For some people, it could be two jobs a day. For some others, it could be five jobs a week. Some people say they apply to as much as five to six jobs a day. Based on the available time you have after work, I know most of you are working, try your best to apply to these jobs in such a way that you can give it your all at that moment and increase your chances of landing that job. But seriously, I really believe that you can do this. I know it's not easy receiving all these rejection letters. Please hang in there and apply all the tips I've given you here so that you can increase your chances of nailing that job that you dream of. If you're wondering some of the reasons why some international students fail to get a job after they complete their studies, please check this video here. Check this video here. I'll see you in my next one. Thank you very much. I'm rooting for you. Bye-bye.